Welcome. Uh, my name is Steve Powell, Director of Training Education for PowerPlate. So thanks for joining. We have people from, from all over the world. So I've kind of said good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night uh, to everybody that's joining. So just to kind of preempt in relation to uh, this, this is our what we call a virtual one hour session. And it's, it's about an overview, really, of the, the what, the why and the how of all of our products, specifically PowerPlate to so whole body vibration also the targeted vibration. Um, so I've just popped on the screen. Hopefully you can see the, the presentation as we're going through along with the video. Um, th there is a link on here because I know in the audience we will have uh, fitness professionals, medical professionals as well that may want to go into a more in-depth part of this education. So you can do so by clicking on the link. But obviously what I want to try and do in this session is to kind of cater for everybody that is on, on the session. So like I said, please shout in with questions as and when they are here. So just to kind of give an overview uh, of our education kind of pathway, really. So this session is the, the virtual discover. Uh, we do deliver this course live. We have a pro version that we typically deliver in, in maybe on site for clubs, trainers, uh, medical professionals. Uh, we then have a certification within our professional pathway, which is called prepare, perform, recover. We also have small group training. And look out for these programs will be coming um, very soon as online options as well. We're looking to launch our brand new online offering um, in coming months. So look out for those. And then we do have a specialist pathway as well at the top. But like I said, today is all about the Discover Workshop. And the three, the three questions we always get asked about power plate and whole body vibration or all of our products um, is what is it or what are they? why should you use them and then how do you use them and that's kind of going to be the the journey that we're going to go on today so looking at all of those kind of three segments and just a little background on myself i've been using power plate now uh, or whole body vibration now for over 20 years um, in different capacities as a strength performance coach personal trainer and uh, i've been very fortunate in the last sort of 13 14 years working for power plate as an educator to travel the world um, developing education, delivering education, uh, directing research, and uh, it's it's a it's a truly phenomenal um, modality. And what we want to make sure we're always sharing is the the most up to date and most relevant application for for, for our audience. So, um, as I said, we're going to kind of hit those three key pillars as we go through the session. So let's start with what is vibration, or what is whole body vibration, um, or what is power plate. And I'll use the word synonymously with whole body vibration and power plate. Power plate's the product. Whole body vibration is essentially the, the science. And then as many of you have the, the rollers, the, the, the pulse, maybe the mini and uh, the dual sphere, we call them targeted vibration. So um, all kind of under this umbrella of vibration. So what is it? Power plate's a vibrating platform, helps you prepare faster, perform better and recover quicker. And there's three key words in there faster, better, quicker. And really what the vibration become is this enhancement to whatever it is that you're doing. So whether you're using it as a warm up, whether you're using it as a workout in and of itself, if you have the, the product at home, or um, you may be using it for recovery. So you may use it for all of those, or you may use it for a segment of those. We've mentioned people in the audience for using it maybe for arthritis, for pain management, and I think it's really important that we view the use of power plate, not just as a workout tool. If you have access to one at home, which many of the audience will, then using it every day for mobility, for blood flow, for pain management, for lymphatic circulation. So it goes way beyond just using it as a, as a workout tool. But of course, if we're going to do that, it allows us to get results faster and quicker. Why should you use it? It makes you feel better. Very important. Stimulates the body's natural reflexes, increasing muscle activation. So essentially waking the body up, turning all the muscles on, and therefore, as a result of that, increasing circulation. And this is the bit that um, often, certainly when we talk to fitness professionals and anybody, it's about, well, how do I use it? There's so many things you can do. How do you then use the products in order to get the best out of them? And it's really, really simple. Essentially, it helps to think about power plate vibration as really just um, a, an environment that enhances whatever you do 
whether it's simple or complex that you would typically do on the ground. So since so I'm moving back slightly is I might do a traditional hamstring stretch on the ground, then I don't change anything in terms of what I do. But if I do exactly that same thing with the vibration, the vibration becomes that enhancement component. So in this case, it would be blood flow, circulation, hydrating the tissue, preparing the body for movement much more efficiently and more effectively. So for those of you on the, on the group that are maybe fitness professionals or medical professionals, it's really important that we position this as very much an enhancement to, not a replacement for. So just to broaden the scope a little bit in relation to vibration, then today, as Haley said earlier, we're focusing heavily on whole body vibration with power plate and targeted vibration with the percussion, with the pulps and the rollers but also just very quickly introducing the brand new product for us, which is the Power Plate Rev, which is our first self-powered modality. So it looks like a bike, but it's so much more than a bike. And we've taken that vibration technology and put it into a very common modality, which is a bike. So we're very excited as part of this vibration experience to be also launching a self-powered vibration. But this focus today is very much on whole body and targeted vibration. So let's look a little bit about the science. What is it? Um, we mentioned that it, that it vibrates. and But it's not just about the fact that it vibrates. There's multiple factors to consider in relation to the vibration. We know that vibration is all around us. Every cell in your body vibrates. Every time your foot hits the ground and the, the, the ground pushes back, there's vibration. You might get vibration in a car, on the tube, on the train. But when we're talking about mechanical vibration with power plates, we're talking about what we call a harmonic vibration wave. So in other words, if you set the, the, the machine for a certain setting, so for example, um, 30 hertz low, and I'll talk about the frequency and amplitude in a second, then that is a predetermined rhythmical, as you can see from the, the visual on the screen, harmonic, predictable and precise vibration wave. Very specific to therefore allowing the body, particularly the nervous system, to respond. And that's how we stimulate the body's natural reflexes. And that's how we get this muscle stimulation. So the, the harmonic nature of the vibration is very important. And you can think of that in two, in two characteristics. So two characteristics of mechanical vibration. The first is the frequency. So that's the speed, which is measured in Hertz. And that's the number of vibrations per second. And depending on the product that you have, we'll talk about the power plate, um, typically, they will work from 25 to 30, 30 to 40. Uh, some of the products will go up to 50 hertz, but it's typically that 30 to 40 hertz range. And I'll talk much more about the settings as we go through the session. But frequency is the number of vibrations per second. And that, for me personally, I believe that is probably the most important setting um, to understand that it's the quality of the vibration delivered to the body that determines the quality of the response. So the second component is amplitude. And that essentially is the depth or how much the machine is moving up and down. So it's um, in more technical terms, the vertical displacement of the platform, but essentially as it drops away from you and then comes back up, it's dropping and coming back up over a certain distance measured in millimeters. And that is the amplitude. Typically with a uh, power plate, we have a low and a high. So the low would be one to two millimeters, high would be three to four millimeters. So hopefully you can see the, the visual with the hand is, think about 30 hertz low being here, 30 hertz high being same speed, but bigger amplitude, and therefore there's a greater force component coming into the body. And I'll talk much more about that later when we talk about applications in strength and the, 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 the bone density perspective as well. So that's our two characteristics of vibration. However, what we also want to look at, and this is what makes power plate very unique, it's not just the fact that it's harmonic, it's also the directions in which the power plate moves. So predominantly the vibration is vertical up and down. So around 80% of the, the vibration direction is vertical, but it also moves forward and back. So forward and back in the sagittal plane, side to side in the frontal plane, so you often hear it described as this triplanar or three-dimensional vibration, predominantly vertical, but also moving in different directions. So 
what does that mean? Well, when we talk about what that creates in terms of the challenge and the demand on the body, then if we think primarily in this case around the vertical aspect, as it's dropping down and coming back, the platform is essentially replicating what we call micro hits of ground reaction force. So for example, when we, when we walk, when we jump, when we run, when we land, we hit the ground, the ground pushes back, that's called ground reaction forces. What the power plate is able to do is replicate those very low but very rapid ground reaction force contacts. And that's very, very important when we look at things like bone density, because it's creating very low impact, but the, the, the speed of that impact is, is, is very unique, and also for tendon health, for rehabilitation. So this micro hits of ground reaction force is delivered based on the fact the machine is predominantly moving vertically. Second to that is because it's dropping down and for a split second, literally a split second, the platform drops down, the floor disappears. So the body has to reflexively respond very quickly and then the floors come back. And then when you combine that with forward and back and side to side movement, it creates this very, uh, very unique uh, environment for the body where the stability component is challenged. So we call that micro moments of instability where the body feels stable and unstable almost instantaneously. As you guys will know, is if you create an environment where the body is uh, perceives instability, that's why we talk about much more core activation or pelvic floor activation. That's why we get much more response in the body from say rehabilitation because we can start to stimulate joints and the receptors around joints because of the movement the plate creates and the instability that it creates, but in a very, very safe, very effective way. And I'll talk a lot more about that when we get into the, the practical application of how all of those stimulus to the body come together to create this demand um, on the system. So hopefully that kind of gives a bit of an introduction to um, the, the, the nature and the, the, the science behind vibration. So what does that mean and, and what happens in the body? So as I mentioned before, this is very much stimulating the body's natural reflexes. So we think about the body has different reflexes. Uh, we call them proprioceptors, kind of receptors in the body, uh, in the skin, in the joints, in the muscles, all over the body to kind of detect what's going on both inside and outside. So two, two very common examples of reflexes, I'm sure um, you've maybe seen this sort of either, or maybe even experienced it yourself, is that kind of knee tap test, the patella reflex test, where that very fast tap of the patella tendon, also the, the reaction in the body is a, is, a, is a knee jerk or a reflexive muscle contraction. Um, similarly, if you touch a hot surface, before you've even thought about it and realize that it's hot, you've already pulled the, the hand away because we have these uh, reflexes in the body. And it's that first example that we're talking about that has a big relevance to power play. That reflexive muscle action is occurring and happening multiple times per second. And as a result of stimulating the, that natural reflex, which obviously is a, you know, relates to the nervous system, that's what we mean by activation. We can call that in simple terms, waking everything up, turning the muscles on. So more muscles are therefore going to be doing more things more often. So if we think about an exercise like a squat, for example, we're performing the squat. On top of performing the squat, when we're on the vibration, we're also getting much more muscle activation. Therefore, the muscle recruitment is significantly higher. And you may expand that into uh, to, to neuromuscular activation, um, to a little bit more technical terms. But the principle there being is that it stimulates the proprioceptors, so very much a, a neurological response and therefore stimulating the muscles as well. So that activation is a kind of word that we kind of describe. What we really mean is sort of that neuromuscular activation. So what is the response in the body? Well, it's, it's multiple with that regard. We stimulate the nervous system. So that has huge applications I'll talk about in a second. And as a result of that, we're also then going to stimulate uh, on the screen. It says the myofascial system. So the, that's the muscles and the fascia. So we think about the fascia as connective tissue. So it's kind of like a spider web that essentially connects muscles to muscles. Um, it also surrounds the individual muscle fibers. Uh, but essentially, the, uh, the, the fascial component of the body is um, a transmitter of information as well. So you, you can't really stimulate muscles without really stimulating the, the fascia and the connective tissue. So that myofascial and skeletal 
the skeletal obviously being the, the bones. And that is, as I said before about the, for example, bone density, one of the key benefits of vibration is as a result of that ground reaction force and that low level or repetitive force application. And if we have all of this stimulus to the body, we therefore have to have an effect on, uh, on the highways and the circulatory and the lymphatic system um, as a consequence of, the, of, of, of that activation. So in, in summary, that, that stimulation of the body's natural reflexes increases muscle activation and has an effect and a response on the nervous system, the muscles, the connective tissue, the bones, and our circulatory pathways. So to then summarize that in terms of what that means from a benefits perspective, then hopefully you can see the screen. There's a, there's a lot of, of information on here. Um, and we break it into those three segments, the software, kind of the nervous system, hardware, bones, muscles, connective tissue, and then the highways is circulatory. So from the top, looking at the software, so neuromuscular activation, as I've mentioned, applications and responses for improving motor learning, so the body's ability to learn movement, control movement, and repeat movement, so then for motor control. And also pain dampening. We had a couple of um, people in the audience that talked about arthritis, so managing chronic pain. And there is a degree of an analgesic effect um, based on what's called pain gate theory, um, which does allow vibration to be used for many people to, to manage chronic pain or to manage pain from a pain dampening standpoint, um, which obviously is very, very relevant to, 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 to clients or maybe even people within the, within the audience. So that's our software component. I think about the hardware. This is kind of the stuff that everybody recognizes. These are the things that a lot of you in the chat put the reasons why you're using power plate and vibration so increasing range of motion, so flexibility and mobility, use those words sort of interchangeably, increases muscle fiber recruitment, so the percentage of muscle fiber recruitment, um, specifically fast switch muscle fibers, um, which is very, very important. And therefore, subject to the programming and, and how everything comes together, we can improve strength, and that can be relative, relative strength for anybody, whether that's um, an 80-year-old, um, with, with arthritis, maybe has a hip replacement to uh, an elite athlete. I think we have some people in the audience that maybe train with, with elite athletes. The, the response in the body it, from a vibration standpoint is very similar. All that really changes is the programming and the loads applied and the, and the, the mechanical demand also placed on the body um, to allow us to get strength, power, um, hypertrophy, so muscle size, um, benefits. And then lastly, metabolic demand. So metabolic demand it's kind of how we position the product around weight loss um, and using the vibration to create more activity, more demand metabolically on the body can therefore be, um, as part of a weight loss program, uh, greater calorie expenditure because the body's doing more things more often, depending on what the, the exercise be. So that's our, that's our hardware. That's our kind of key responses in relation to, to the hardware. And then finally, the highways, really, really important, becoming much more um, understood in terms of the importance of circulation, lymphatic flow, um, hydrating the tissues to allow them to move effectively over each other. So some real significant, very fast benefits as well with vibration, whether it be whole body or, of course, targeted um, blood flow, so superficial blood flow, circulation, uh, hydrating the tissues, as I mentioned, so allowing the fluid flow to be created um, within that connective tissue layers as well to allow the body to move more freely. Uh, lymphatic drainage, which I know people um, on the audience have already said they're using it for. Um, there are some key sites in the body that, uh, for example, the, the back of the knee, uh, the popliteal area, the back of the knee, have a very important site for, for stimulating the lymph system. So a very simple application, for example, with like a calf massage, um, gives you the benefits of the circulatory benefit from blood flow but you're also tapping into that lymphatic stimulation as well. Because the lymph system is, is passive, it requires movement either externally or externally or internally um, to promote that lymphatic, the lymphatic flow. And you could link that into um, reduction in muscle soreness and DOMS and recovery, so reducing pain and swelling. So again, hopefully trying to connect the dots between what the vibration is what response the body has, and then what are those benefits as we move through. So many of you in, in the audience may like to um, do some further reading, some further investigation from a research standpoint. We 
three, eight, uh, sort of four, four different buckets that, that our research sits under. So medical and rehabilitation, health and wellness, uh, active aging, and obviously fitness and athletic performance. There is a link on the screen that you can access that via the website. And of course, you will have our contact details. If anybody wants specific uh, information on research, then you can contact myself and the training team, and we'll be happy to facilitate further information to you. Okay, so hopefully that's, uh, that's kind of the, the, the science bit out of the way. I'm just going to pause for a second and just check the, the chat. Um, Jess, let me know if there's anybody, any specific questions. I'm going to have a little look myself as well. So just if there's any questions at this stage, please pop them in the chat. I'm just going to have a brief pause just to, to make sure we have a look. We do have one question in the Q&A. Perfect. Go ahead. Um, is it safe to use when you've had surgery on your lumbar spine? Good question. Um, so let me, I'll answer that in, in, in part now and then I'll make sure I come back to it. Um, obviously, the answer would be yes, and it depends at the same time in, in regards to what the surgery is, how long the surgery was, uh, was and obviously the, the nature of the, the individual and the capacity they're at now um, in relation to if they are, and I'm kind of cover this again at the end, is if an individual can do cardiovascular exercise, weight-bearing exercise, uh, and strength training, then when they're at that point, then there's no reason why they can't use power plate. However, with a specific condition, and in this case, the, the, the spine, it may be that there's some considerations about how it's used and what it's used for and the direct or indirect contact of the spine itself. So, for example, um, exercises maybe where we're doing stretching and mobility, even squats, depending on the individual and their capacity, then because the vibration is being dampened and, and drawn into the, the muscles, then yes, the answer would be that could be used. But with something specific to, to spinal surgery, that would be something we would probably want to support and have a little bit more information um, to help with. But principally, yes, depending on the, on the individual and their capacity. Hopefully that answers that question. Have a little look. Ah, I can see. So uh, for pregnancy, then again, this, the, the kind of the same answer applies in relation to if uh, an individual can do cardiovascular exercise, strength training, um, weight bearing exercise, then, then yes. And what we typically say, say around pregnancy is there's the general recommendation around exercise and pregnancy is not to start anything new during pregnancy. Whereas if an individual is already using power plate, then certainly they will be able to continue that use um, during pregnancy, subject to that the, the, the standard recommendations of exercise and activity going through first, second, third trimester. So there will be some modifications and certain positions that we would we, we, we would suggest are modified or avoided along the lines of general guidance on um, on uh, sort of prenatal exercise. And again, the same coming back into um, heart valve replacement. Again, I'll answer that now because I touched on the medical conditions. It kind of comes back to that same initial statement of if that individual is clear to do cardiovascular exercise at any level, weight-bearing exercise at any capacity, and strength-based training, then yes, they would be um, good candidates to use the, the vibration once they're at that point of um, whether it be a, a phase four cardiac rehabilitation program, once they are then back essentially to relative function, then they will be able to introduce power play. Again, under the guidance of medical professionals, and it's more about then what they do on the machine, um, because there's some very good benefits in relation to uh, things like flexibility, circulation, um, restoring movement in the body. And obviously with any... Um, uh, sort of cardiovascular or, or heart related uh, surgery or, or, or stents, etc. Then it's all has to be modified in terms of the exercise application, but principally from a vibration standpoint. If they meet that first criteria, then then yes. And that kind of um, where are we? Let's have a quick look. is 30. Hello, Alice. <laughs> I recognize the name. Um, so 
from a bone bone building standpoint, typically the general recommendations are between 30 and 35 hertz. Um, we don't necessarily specify whether one is better than the other. I think those two frequencies, uh, sorry, the, the, the question, just in case I didn't repeat the question was, is 30 hertz just as effective as 35 hertz for building bone? Then the, the research on, on that is suggesting that maybe 35 hertz is, is potentially more effective, but equally, there are other considerations in relation to how that feels for the individual um, and the user. We typically go off what feels the most comfortable. However, the, the 30 and 35 are definitely the, 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 the optimum ranges. Um, 35 being the one that seems to come back from some of the, the, the more recent research um, uh, as, as being potentially more optimal. But 30 or 35, we, we certainly recommend. So if someone, uh, I'll answer this last one and then I'm going to move on. Uh, if someone doesn't do any exercise and just wants to start on the power plate, can they do so? Or do they need to start with normal workouts first? Great question, um, Amy. Thanks for the question. I would say absolutely yes, because the, the, the idea is that power plate is a way of enhancing movement and exercise. So, for example, we have, we have individuals in care homes, in residential homes, using power plate for... Um, even in, in a seated position for blood flow and circulation, for mobility, um, we have a, a, such a broad population of, of use. Um, we absolutely recommend an individual that hasn't done any exercise, is, is not on exercise, or does, almost even if they do absolutely nothing, then certainly the power plate is a very, very good place to start. Because what you actually have to or don't have to do is too much movement. You know, you can start with flexibility or mobility. Um, very, very simple, very easy exercises. And um, because the vibration gives the body more blood flow, more circulation, more stimulation, we find a lot of people actually find using power plate is a great introduction then into doing more formal exercise. And of course, then maybe combining it with going walking and other things. So certainly, um, then yes, absolutely. It's a great modality to introduce somebody right at the beginning of their exercise journey. It's a great question. Have a quick time check on here. <laughs> so, guys, what I'm going to do, there is a couple of other questions um, pelvic floor prolapse. Uh, again, principally, the, the, absolutely, yes, that would be fine. Um, so, Christine, for sure, I think there's probably some considerations around when and how in terms of application and the nature of the, uh, 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 of the prolapse. Uh, we, we do have some specialist um, partners that we work with, uh, a lady called Jenny Burrell, for example, who specializes in postnatal um, pelvic floor restoration. So we have a lot of, we, we have a lot of work and application and um, uh, sort of recommendations for, for pelvic floor dysfunction and obviously any sort of prolapse. So yeah, that's something maybe we can pick up sort of directly. Um, and the same, Janice, you mentioned about sort of surgery and, and uh, decompression surgery with Plates. I'm assuming that's maybe spinal plates or some sort of um, plates within the spine. Uh, again, that I will, I've kind of covered it all, so I may as well finish off covering it now. The, 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 the use of uh, a vibration with metal implants, plates, pins, again, it's, it's certainly possible. Um, it's just around making sure that, again, that individual is able to do weight-bearing exercise, uh, cardiovascular exercise, and strength training within their own capacity. And then again, it becomes consideration of what exercise they do with the vibration and how the vibration is delivered into the body. Um, so again, I'm happy to pick that up sort of maybe more specifically if we have time at the end or um, kind of in a separate conversation. So um, I'm going to, hopefully that's answered everyone. So thank you very much, guys. That was some great questions. Um, I'm going to move back into the session. Jess, have I missed anything? Um, there was just one in our chat that just somebody asked if it was safe to use daily. Great question. Yeah. Um, and that sort of is uh, the answer. The simple answer is yes. As I mentioned, this is more than just a workout tool. So I've used PowerPlate now personally and professionally for over 20 years. This is my home studio. I use it every day, multiple times per day. Um, so maybe that's in the morning for blood flow, for circulation, um, later on in the evening for massage, relaxation. 
and then I'll do my workouts on it and with it maybe a couple of times a week. Um, if I go uh, maybe walking or, or, or running, I'll use it as my warm up and then come back and use recovery. So absolutely, the use of vibration daily is absolutely fine. Of course, there has to be then considerations about what you're doing. And that's no different to any type of exercise. So principally with vibration, yes. The same with the targeted vibration. You can certainly use it daily, multiple times per day. And hopefully that kind of gives a picture of what that might look like. And then we'll, we'll sort of talk about the application of that sort of as we get into the practical. So yes, uh, great question. So just I just wanted to touch very quickly because we do have um, the, a lot of people in the audience with the targeted products. Um, so for example, the, the percussive massage with the gun, some, some key benefits specific to targeted vibration, very similar in, 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 uh, in relation to the blood flow and circulation. But again, from an alleviation of pain, reducing muscle stiffness and soreness, increase in circulation, tissue hydration, um, therefore allowing us to enhance range of motion, flexibility. If the tissue is better hydrated, if the, the tissue area is warmer, um, then that allows a more a greater extensibility of the tissue. Therefore, we can enhance flexibility. Um, and there's a, there's a local activation from a neurological standpoint. Um, it's, it's a little different to what we call uh, global activation with, with whole body vibration, but there is certainly a local stimulation uh, at a neural level, but it's very much targeted to the area that you are um, applying that stimulus, whereas very different to, to whole body vibration. Okay, so let's look at, I'm just gonna move this off the screen. So let's move into uh, practical. I can just move the chat out of the way. Okay, so that's a second. Great. So now we're going to look at the, we think about the, the start of the journey of what is it, why does it work, how do I use it? Let's look at how do we use it. And this is, uh, around the, the training application. So we have three components that we call training components, prepare, perform, recover. And then we have the sort of sub components within each of those categories. So for example, uh, on the prepare, soft tissue. So working with, um, with, with, with the tools like the rollers, flexibility, mobility, and stability. When we get to perform, we look at core integration, strength and power, and then recover. Again, we may have flexibility, but recovery is very much around soft tissue and also massage. So what I'd like to do, and I know many of you uh, hopefully will have the products to hand, is we're going to look now at some practical application within each of those segments. And what you'll see on the screen is just a, an overview of the settings. So by all means, take a screenshot. I will talk about this as we go through each component. But this is just recommendations broadly for each training component. So as you can see, prepare 30 to 35 hertz low, perform 30 to 40 hertz low or high, and then recover depending on the application. So for example, if it's flexibility in recover, you may stay 30 to 35. But if it's the massage, you can use 30 to 40 and even up to 50 for massage, uh, depending on the machine that you have. And then recommendations briefly for the targeted products, uh, very much self-selected with the, with, the, with the targeted products um, in relation to the settings. So settings one to four on the pulse. And again, the same principle applies to the dual sphere. And I'm going to go through some practical application and kind of reiterate some of those settings as we go through. So if those that have the product would like to, by all means, join me in this. Um, it's a little difficult because I can't see anybody. So I'm kind of assuming that I've got lots of people maybe getting up and um, sort of moving around. So I'm going to start with uh, the dual sphere and the roller just very, very quickly. And obviously, if you have it already, you've probably figured this out. You have four settings. So you use press um, and then that tells you then which settings you're on. So one, two and three obviously is increasing the frequency each time. And then setting four essentially is a wave that works through each of those settings, one, two, and three. So we're gonna start with the, uh, the plantar fascia area. So the undersurface of the feet, so this is kind of great for, um, certainly for, for daily use. Um, the undersurface of the feet often get very dehydrated. Um, I'm gonna pop my, my shoe off 
and we're going to set the, the 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 roller, the sorry, the dual sphere. You can use the roller as well. No no problem with that if you if you want to. Um, and all we're going to do is self-select the settings. I'm just going to pop the the roller on the power plate just so you can see. I'm not turning the power plate on. So this is great for um, releasing tension in the plantar fascia. So essentially um, working really slowly, so one to two inches at a time. Because of the shape of the dual sphere, it's great because it kind of creates a little drag. It kind of connects and allows the, the skin to kind of be moved as well. So you're moving forward and back. You can move a little bit in different directions into the heel and just kind of work your way around and just graduate the pressure. We're not trying to put too much pressure, uh, but you can use the opposite leg to kind of graduate that pressure and just kind of explore how the body, how the body feels. If you have uh, other products or other tools like tennis balls, you can certainly do exactly the same thing. Just pop them on top of the, of, of the power plate as well. And I'm then going to sh just quickly shift gears into the roller. And again, depending on which products you have, I'm going to show you a couple of exercises, kind of work into uh, the, the calf Achilles area. So very good, particularly if you, for example, prepping the body for running before you go running. So we're, again, the movement and the application is very controlled, very subtle, very slow controlled movements. And they're adding a little bit of variability, in this case, moving the foot side to side, maybe going in circular motions. So we're kind of creating that variability in the connective tissue and working our way through the length of the, in this case, the calf, the Achilles, and working through the lower leg. We can do exactly the same with the roller. And equally, we could do exactly the same if at this point you don't have one of our targeted products, but you have a power plate then you could essentially pop a normal roller on top of vibration and perform exactly the same technique. So lots of options there. Just uh, again, for an, other examples, um, working into uh, the hip. Again, I'm just using the power plate just, as, just to raise it up so it's a little easier to see. So we might work into the front part of the hip. So again, very slow movement. We can move forward and back. Really nice to drag and slide the hips across from side to side. Then we can come up, add a little bend through the knee. Imagine the foot's a windscreen wiper going inside and outside. So again, creates a little variability in the, in the tissues. But adding that little bit of movement as we're allowing the vibration to increase hydration in the tissue, increase blood flow. Circulation, we can do the same into glutes. Again, the application always being controlled, rhythmical movements, relax the breathing, and self select the settings that feel most comfortable to you. And then just dropping into the percussion with, with the pulse, then Depending on the product that you have, um, some of you may have the, the mini, but I think a lot of people in the audience had the pulse. Comes obviously with different attachments. Uh, we have a great solution on the app that tells you which app or which uh, settings to use for um, both for preference, but also which attachments to use for different parts of the body. So typically I like to use the, the, the small ball because it kind of is quite versatile. Um, but depending on the area, um, you have either four or six settings, depending on which pulse that you have. And I think the most important thing in relation to percussion is to ensure that you start with very controlled, kind of almost subtle movements. It's not about how hard you press, but the movement can be up and down. It can be in sort of circular motions. And that's kind of... Um, a little bit of, of, of sort of an ex example of sort of upper body work with, with the pulse as well. We can work into the shoulders. And really what makes this very unique is the fact that you can very simply point to the area and then you're able to, you're able to increase blood flow, circulation and hydration specifically to those areas. 
So that's a very quick introduction to uh, the, the targeted products. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to unshare the screen so I can move into some practical specifically around Power Plate as well. So let me check. Again, Jess, if there's anything that comes up in the chat, please let me know as we go through. So. All right, stop share. Okay, uh, just checking that that's still okay and you can see me, Jess? Yep, okay. Right, perfect. Okay, so very quickly in relation to settings and things on the move, um, this is the, the machine that I have. Obviously, I know some of you have your My5, um, uh, Pro5 I think we had as well. So obviously different machines have different settings. So when we look at the overall settings for preparation, so for pre prepare, which is what we're going to talk about now, then typically it's 30 to 35 hertz on a low amplitude, which on the move would be one or two lights. Um, and obviously you will select that on the, the My5 directly um, and the same on, on the Pro5. And if you have other products, then again, it's, this, it's maybe slightly different variances. Just to cover the basics in relation to the, 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 the mat, the products, the mat is there essentially to, pro to protect the body, make it a little more comfortable when you're in direct contact. So the hands, the skin, uh, bony areas. So if you're using it for things like planks or also if you're using it for, for massage. So when you're putting a part of the body directly on the machine, then the mat is a really good resource. Um, to, to use, again, slightly different thicknesses depending on the product. But essentially, if you're going to use it when you're standing on the machine, particularly if you're wearing trainers and footwear, you can take the mat off. Uh, again, if you prefer to use the product barefoot, that's great too. You may want to keep the mat on again just to kind of essentially um, protect the skin a little bit, but it is very much personal preference. So Again, if you're joining me and you have um, you have a, a plate with you, or if you want to move a little bit, we're just going to go through essentially a few very basic uh, initial little, um, movements for what we would call functional flexibility. So we'll start with um, the hamstrings. So I'm going to select, select my settings 35 just for preference. And then all we're going to do is a slight bend through the knee. So working the hamstrings, the back of the leg, slight bend through the knee, snap the laces to the sky, and then all we're going to do very rhythmically, just tipping the hips forward. So tip the pelvis forward and then come back. So as you're tipping forward, it's just that slight stretch felt at the back of the leg. And then we take the tension out. So one of the things to always remember is that tension in the body is a magnet for the vibration. So wherever you're creating tension, that's how the vibration is drawn into the body. And that's where we elicit all of those benefits we've talked about. So with the stretching and application, um, it may be that we want to add a little bit of variation. So we might maybe move from side to side. We might add a little bit of rotation. We could reach the hands in different directions. Or if you feel more comfortable, you need the support, you can hold on to the wall. Or in this case, I have the stability bars and you can hold a more static position. And the beauty here is that it doesn't matter if you're doing this with me, we'll change legs. It doesn't matter what and how you use the product in relation to, in this case, the hamstring stretch. So you may have a preference in terms of how you like to do your hamstring stretch. It's okay, whatever you want to do, because so long as you're in the right position, i.e. the foot is in contact with the area and the leg that you're looking to, to stretch is in contact with the vibration, how you perform the movement, whether it's dynamic, whether it's three-dimensional stretching, it really is um, sort of down to you. Perfect. So this is hamstrings. Obviously, by adding a little bit of movement, then we're able to essentially hydrate the tissues. As we're moving, we create tension in different places, and therefore the vibration travels through the body maybe a little bit differently because we're adding movement as well. So we really, we really encourage rhythmical, comfortable movement while we're doing our flexibility. So we've kind of done the back of the legs. Let's do the front. This is a great exercise that you can do. Um, as the question that we got asked earlier, can you use it daily? So if you're sat down at work or you're sat down a lot, then certainly this, um, this what we would call anterior hip, so front of the hip stretch, really good. If you think about being in that seated position to kind of open the hips, open the front part of the body. 
And this is why I want to just take a little bit of time just to explain to you kind of in relation to the transfer of vibration. So, for example, we can perform this exercise in a kneeling position. And if you remember uh, what we said earlier, the vibration direction is predominantly vertical. So if you find that in this position, when you are vertical in relation to the upper body, you'll find that much more vibration travel to the head because that's how the vibration is traveling into the body. We just want to make sure that we're set. Again, if you're doing this with me, then great. Then I really encourage my, my clients and I, myself is to have the back toe pushed into the platform. Imagine you're pushing the ground away and that kind of just lifts that front knee slightly. We're not lifting it off the machine, but it just takes a little bit of the tension out. And then we can just rhythmically, in this case, we drop the hips forward and back. Then we can go a little bit side to side. Maybe add a little bit of rotation. So again, just exploring what feels comfortable. And then as a way of kind of making this a little bit more what we would call global, you can maybe bring the hands, so you can reach the hands above the head. You can add a little bit of rotation. So that movement really does enhance what the vibration is already doing in terms of blood flow and circulation. Now, if you find that you want to make a slight progression or just a tweak to the position, then again, try this with me, is you can then come to a standing position and the contact point has now changed. So how that feels in relation to vibrations of the head is, is very, very different. And it may be that you then need to uh, come to a point of support, maybe a wall, you might have a stick or something where you can hold on if needed for balance and stability. But now we can be in a more sort of standing position and still stretch the, the front of the hip, exactly the same direction, exactly the same application. And that then allows us maybe to be, again, bringing in more of the body, but also for some clients, maybe for yourselves, you might find that feels a little more comfortable depending on, on the vibration travel to the body. So I'm going to move into, and again, obviously, this is just a, an introduction to these, the, the, the many flexibility and mobility, mobility exercises we can do. I'm going to just hit the upper body, just um, as one more example. I come around slightly on the angle. Hopefully this is okay for the camera. So we'll move into the, into the lats, into the upper body. And I'm just moving to the side just so that you can see me. Um, obviously you can use this at the front of the machine. So just turning the, the hands up. So the thumbs are towards the ceiling, hands are nice and wide. And just dropping the, the chest down towards the floor and just thinking in the so up and down. A really nice stretch for the lats allowing the vibration to travel through the upper body into the lats, into the upper back. I'm going to shift from side to side, add a little bit of movement. So again, just exploring different positions, different movements. We could go single arm in that position, maybe add a little reach. So again, really allowing the vibration to travel from that contact point down into the, the lats, shoulders, and the upper back. Just an example for that upper body. And as I said before, just to reiterate, the most important thing from an application standpoint is whatever you might typically do on the ground, you can also then do that on the plate and the vibration becomes an enhancement to that. OK, so that's our prepare. I'm going to quickly check back in. Make sure there's no additional comments. No, perfect. And then I'm going to move into uh, perform. I know we're kind of pushing time, as always. It's very difficult to condense all the information. So I want to talk a little bit about PERFORM, which is essentially core and strength. And I think sort of two exercises that we always uh, show, because they're very common, very familiar exercises, uh, is, is the plank uh, or a prone position. And again, if we think about now, when we're in this position in relation to the vibration, thinking about the vertical movement, the side to side movement, the vibration is creating that instability for the upper body through the shoulders, therefore challenging the core much more than if we were doing that same exercise on the ground. So that's our uh, increase in demand on in relation to muscle activation. So again, from this position, by all means, join me. You could start on the knees. The nice thing about this position is the, the platform is slightly raised as well. So makes it kind of an incline position. We can go to the knees in that kind of half kneeling position. Obviously, we can go into the hand. Um, we can come up this position again in all different applications or positions in relation to the plank 
And then also what's really nice is to add that little bit of movement so we can maybe move forward and back. We can drive the hips from side to side. We can drop one knee down to the floor, the other knee down to the floor. We can do our walking planks. So again, the key here is that whatever you're doing, using the vibration will add that demand to the body. But the key in relation to the, 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 this prone position is we're having the upper body on the machine because that's the most proximal contact area with the, the platform. It's really, really important to remember that as we look at different exercises. I'm going to shoot straight over into a glute bridge, another very popular exercise. And again, the principle here being that we're obviously supine, so facing upwards. We're really going to focus on driving the heels into the platform. We drive the hips to the sky and then control that movement down. Again, as we're driving the heels into the platform, snap the hips up, control down. We could take that into a single leg. So a really nice variation would be to take, in this case, taking the left leg, cross that over with the, with the right arm. So we create this kind of tension and stability and drive that single leg exercise. So again, adding more demand, more challenge. And it may be depending on your, yourself or the client, you may want to use, and I'll show you some application with the steps shortly, uh, a step or a cushion maybe to raise the upper body up if you're using it on, on the floor. Just checking, I think I saw a question. Jess, by all means, if there's any questions practically, just um, let me know so I can kind of pitch them as we're, as we're going through. So that was our core. So that's plank, all variations, and the glute bridge. But then when we go into strength, then again, there's, there's so much application in strength. Um, we can start with maybe just for today's purposes, a couple of examples. The most obvious being kind of following on from the plank, a push up. So a push up, probably my favorite and certainly one of the most challenging upper body exercises on the power plate. And the key again is that we have the upper body on the platform because we're trying to maximize that transfer of vibration into the upper body so we can make the movement slow and controlled. We can do positions where we're holding positions to create more tension. And this is where, depending on, because I know we have some individuals uh, maybe working with athletes, is you would make the same progression as you might do on the ground. So, for example, because the platform is in an inclined position, you may want to elevate the back foot, and therefore that obviously changes the influence of gravity and maybe makes that exercise much harder, much more demanding. Of course, you could add weighted vests and load to the body because the more load you add, the more tension created, the more tension, the bigger the magnet for vibration, therefore the bigger the, the neuromuscular response. And obviously, let's go the other way to that. Of course, we can go into a kneeling position and just... Because we, again, we had the question of can anybody use the machine and start? And of course, this may be how and where an individual might start. And the beauty here is, again, the, the position is really comfortable for someone just starting out, maybe who's never even done a push-up before, just to introduce that control of the body weight. Also, we mentioned in the audience about bone strength, push-ups, any, any exercise where we've got the upper body and the hands in contact phenomenal way of building bone strength in the wrists very important area to strengthen often a very difficult area to strengthen so being in kind of even no matter what the modification is a push-up position or a prone position allows us to really take advantage of the vibration from a um, wrist strengthening bone strengthening perspective and then obviously that's more of a pushing movement i'm just going to show and introduce the straps I know that many of you have uh, the move. Some of you will have uh, maybe Pro 5 or a My 5. If there is anybody in the audience that has a My 7 or a Pro 7 that have dynamic cables, again, we have uh, products that have dynamic cables, a little different. They allow you to move dynamically. The principle with the straps is that, and a quick, probably one of my favorite exercises with them really, is you can adjust the length of the strap up and down with the Velcro. And you can kind of 
attach it so that they're at the same length. And the principle of the strap is in order for the vibration to travel to the upper body, we have to create tension in the strap. So, for example, we might, in this case, I'm going to show you a, a row or a, a bent over row exercise. So we cross the straps over, we hinge and tip forward from the hips, and then we drop into that row as we add a squat. So we're pulling up against the straps and then controlling the movement up and down. And the key here is that we can create as much tension as we can. And imagine we're trying to really rip the straps off the platform. And that allows us to, crowd, to create as much tension as possible. We could do a similar exercise with a bicep curl, literally work as hard as we can to create that tension. And that allows us to then transfer the vibration into the upper body. But the key benefit here is that we're also on the platform. So I'm doing a squat to curl or a squat to row. Then now we're taking advantage of the upper body stimulus through the straps. We have the lower body challenge in relation to the lower body muscles, the pelvic floor, uh, activation of, um, of all the spinal stabilizers, simply because we're on top of, of the platform. So a really nice sort of application with the straps is to use them while we're on top of the platform. And then moving to the, to the lower body, exercise like the squat, so very fundamental movements um, with the power plate with body weight. Of course, if you feel more comfortable, you could, I'm just turning away from you just so you can see, maybe hold the stability bars or the, the handles. Maybe if you have the, the move, you can use the wall or anything for, for stability. And the key here, again, is that now that we're on top of the platform, we're taking advantage of the vertical component from a bone stimulation. We've got the, the muscle stimulus, the muscle activation for the quads, the glutes. We've then got that additional challenge of the whole body reflexively responding because the platform is dropping. It's also moving forward and back and side to side. So we're there getting pelvic floor, core activation. And that's what we meant earlier when I said about metabolic demand. I'm performing what looks like a squat, but the vibration enhances it significantly in terms of the demand it places on the body. And then, of course, we could, if we wanted to, um, we can add weight to that. So we can add dumbbells. We could do a squat with dumbbells in all different positions that so we can add load at the right time and obviously depending on the individual and their capacity but certainly for those working with more conditioned individuals and athletes then um, adding load is a great way to challenge and create more tension single leg squats again really really effective exercises from a strength perspective and again one of my favorite exercises for the lower body very very good for uh, bone bone health particularly the, the femur, the pelvic area is about transferring as much vibration to the body as possible. Is it's using the straps and so gripping down on the dead, on, the, on the, the straps themselves into a deadlift position. So a deadlift being as if you're going to sit back into the chair, grip the straps so the arms are straight, and then you're just going to lift. But because you're holding the straps, you're not able to go anywhere. So it's a fixed position. We can move maybe a little bit from side to side, depending on your capacity. You could start from a, from a higher position, so a little bit more comfortable, less tension. If you want that bigger challenge, you can go down into a deeper position, obviously creating more muscle tension. But even as a, as a, as a, as a, as a beginner, or certainly if you're looking to increase uh, or use vibration from a bone health standpoint, then this position and this exercise is certainly one of my favorites, certainly something we highly recommend because the strap allow us to transfer the vibration into the upper body or create tension through the whole body. And this position is a very functional position in terms of stimulating bones, muscles, pelvic floor, and all of those kind of tissues around the, the hip complex. And then finally, this is, again, sort of the last part of the perform bit in relation to, to strength training is I think probably one of what certainly one of my favorite exercises that I do personally is the squat or split squat position, um, certainly with a with a with an elevated back foot. So, for example, I could do this split squat here and just drop the weight down, come back up. Or if you wanted to create much more tension in the front leg, then we could take then 
a split squat position so the back foot is elevated depending on the height that you have available and now this becomes much more challenging so now we have a, a front foot position so really focusing on shifting the weight forward over that front leg and then we create lots of tension in that front leg of course we can add in this case medicine balls we can add some load to this position however we want to do that same principle as we did with the squat so that split squat is an exercise that wants a real challenge for the lower body definitely something to to try and introduce like i said it can be done as a regress version from from the floor just allowing you to 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 control the amount of tension and the challenge placed on the body and the 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 key difference that i just wanted to touch on just before we finish is the difference between a lunging exercise and a split squat so i know lunging exercise is very popular everybody likes to do sort of lunging type movements these are phenomenal as well on the plate to the plate really really good but obviously what you'll see is there's a difference in relation to lunging compared to a split squat the split squat we have constant vibration whereas with the lunge we have intermittent so this is phenomenal exercise for balance coordination for allowing the body to control uh, landing and landing mechanics and things like that it's a really good way of preparing people for dealing with different surfaces so think about sort of from maybe a false prevention standpoint where we're able to then allow the body to control its position while the vibration is coming back up creating instability so hopefully that kind of gives a a variation in relation to different applications within strength okay so I'm just going to quickly check all right i know we're a little over time so jess are you still are you still with us yep any burning questions that i need to answer just before i finish with recovery i know we're a little over time um i think while you're in the perform kind of section somebody asked if there's a way to exercise the lats with power plate the lats yeah i think probably for me we're going into sort of the a, a rowing position so uh whether that's off the plate in relation to sort of a bent over row here so driving probably sort of more for the lats to go with a close grip kind of row here obviously go with a wide grip or that bent over row across the straps over so it allows you to drive the elbows in to the hips behind the behind you and you really get that kind of similar type of movement to a bent over row um, or sort of a low pulley type movement so that's certainly for for the for the back for the for pulling muscles that will be my recommendation and then somebody else asked, um, you have mentioned that the plate is more effective with movement. What about balance exercises holding a position? Okay, so when we talk about balance, then if you're performing traditional balance exercises, then depending on what exercise you would perform on the ground, so for example, you might be doing a sort of holding a balanced position still, if that's the application where you're trying to hold a fixed position, then that's that's absolutely fine. You would apply that same principle to the vibration because that is the exercise that you've chosen. And obviously then what's going to happen is the, the vibration will add more of a balanced challenge, even though you're trying to hold that position in relation to the fact that it's, it's challenging the body's center of gravity. The, the platform is dropping down, it's moving side to side. So if you currently perform balance exercise where you're trying to hold a static position, that's absolutely fine. But you may want a little bit of support as well. And then what we would encourage over time as progression would be perhaps to add a little toe tap in front. So that toe tap then adds that little bit of movement, which adds another challenge to balance. And then that maybe become uh, a kind of a reach rather than a tap. But the great thing about that is we're now starting to train balance dynamically. Because if we think about things like walking is when we walk and we go through that swing phase of walking, the body has to stabilize and balance itself while the other leg is moving. 
So by adding a little bit of movement in the right way to, to make sure that the, the individual is still able to perform the exercise, then, then adding a little bit of movement, even within balance training, we would certainly encourage as part of a, you know, a sort of a progressive program, but certainly as with any of these exercises, holding that static balance position would be absolutely fine as a, as a starting point. Hopefully that answers the, the question. So um, let's finish then with, with massage, uh, certainly most people's favorite in terms of application. Uh, so when, when we're in to recover, recover, of course, could be flexibility, it could be stretching, it could be mobility. Um, but we're going to focus today on, on the massage component because that's what makes power plate very unique. And this is where we also have that difference in terms of application. Everything we've talked about so far is... The more of an active response. So if I'm stretching the hamstrings here, then the vibration is being drawn into that area through muscle tension. Same with the squat, is the, the quads, the glutes, the vibration traveling through the body into those muscle areas. Whereas when we look at uh, massage, what we're now going to do is put a part of the body directly on and in contact with the platform. So this has becomes more of a passive application so we're talking now more around blood flow circulation and this is what we said right at the beginning around lymphatic circulation for example where we're using that massage function to really enhance fluid flow circulation blood flow now that is also where we might include certainly for the upper body for example we may use the percussion for the shoulders for the chest because again this is more of a massage percussive massage function which is very similar to the, the massage functions with, uh, with, with the plate. So I'm just going to show very quickly um, two, two or three just as examples. Again, I'm coming side on to this one. This is going to be the quad massage. Great if you've done a lower body workout, been for a run. And what you're doing really is you're just allowing the body to relax completely. So in this case, the, the settings can be changed from... 30 to 35, all the way up to 40 high, even 50 if your machine goes that high, because we're looking more for massage and circulation. And again, we're just going to allow the body to relax. We can add a little bit of movement, so flexing, extending the knees, rolling the hips in and out. And now this allows us to really start to focus on our breathing. The, the recovery component is, is so important because a lot of the time, this allows us to not just recover from the exercise component, but really start to enhance relaxation, harming the nervous system, um, allowing the, from a, from a hormone standpoint, to sort of allow the body to sort of switch from that flight or fight into rest and digest perspective. Um, and that's a really, really effective use of vibration is to, is to kind of really influence the nervous system. Um, I'm going to show you then this could be the IT band. For the lateral hip area so again we can come into uh, a position where we've got both legs on top of each other so we're stacking the legs down and we can again add a little bit of movement explore what feels comfortable a, a lot of the time um certainly the clients my clients that i work with they sometimes prefer to drop one leg over the top onto the floor just to allow you to control how much pressure down you have on that leg on the plate so again we can kind of bend the knees, we can move position, kind of almost exploring areas where we either have tension or just making sure that we sort of hit all areas of the, the muscle, the connective tissue that we're looking to, to target and, and to, to affect. So, and then the final one is because of the, the question we had around lymphatic drainage. For me, the, there's a key area at the back of the legs, back of the knee called the popliteal area. Uh, and this is really uh, effective for simulating the lymph system. And the position is what we would typically call a calf massage. So it's just making sure that you have the top of the calf, the back of the knee in contact with, with the platform. And you can do this exercise from a uh, position here where we're kind of sat upright. Of course, we can, we can lie back down completely. I'm going to come to the side here. Um, this is probably what I would recommend performing as the last exercise you do, because you have the feet elevated above the heart. 
So it feels very comfortable to relax. The whole body feels supported. You can add a little bit of movement from the lower body. You can circle the ankles. But the key here, this is a phenomenal exercise to focus on the breathing, connect with the body. If you, if you like meditation, things like that, you can almost start to, to, to do that in this position. Spend a few minutes allowing the body to completely recover. And this is great to do last thing at night. For those that were asking around, can you use it every day? Something that you might do if you've been on your feet all day. Certainly something that you would do um, at the end of or after a, a workout. So that kind of calf massage combined with stimulating the back of the knees from a lymphatic perspective. Okay, so I'm very aware of the fact I'm running over time. So I'm just going to, Jess, is there any questions around the, the, the movement or the, the, the training application just before I kind of close the session? Yeah, um, someone just asked on some of the training videos, the trainer says to not do the same exercise every day, but maybe every other day. Do we need to alternate types of exercises done from day to day? Great question. I think that would depend on what exercises they are and what response you're looking to get from those exercises. So for example, if we're talking about traditional strength training where we're maybe doing squats and lunges, um, you're kind of looking at sort of like a, is it a total body workout versus maybe upper body versus lower body? If it's a, maybe you're doing a lot of intense exercises, say in squats and lunges on one day, then yes, you would probably want to then have at least a day maybe two depending to recover between those exercises. So it wouldn't be a case of doing the same exercises intensely every day. If it's more of a workout, then certainly you would apply that kind of rest recovery, um, sort of planning and periodization over, over a week or whatever as part of a training program. However, if it's things like stretching, so for, for me personally, um, constantly have to work on, on the flexibility of my hamstrings and, and, uh, in the thigh to the groin area, the, the, the adductors. So I would perform these every day because flexibility is more of a day-by-day -day adaptation, even multiple times per day. Whereas strength, another goal-based responses maybe are, are, are a little bit different. Similarly, if you might do upper body one day, lower body the next day, because they're different exercises, that would be fine. Uh, if you're using it more for that general bone stimulus as well, then certainly exercises sort of where you're doing things like deadlifts and things like that, definitely recommend maybe having a day in between. Uh, but certainly for the, the flexibility, the mobility, and the massage, they're the types of exercise that you could certainly do on a daily basis. The key is just balancing that out over the training week or over, the, over your, your week to make sure that you're not doing too much of the same thing, which is no different to any other type of, uh, of exercise. Hopefully that helps. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna quickly come back and share my screen just to close the, the session here. Let me make sure. So I know hopefully I answered the questions previously around um, medical conditions. I'm just gonna quickly reiterate the fact that if an individual is clear to do like back on here then if an individual is cleared to do weight bearing exercise strength training and cardiovascular exercise that's kind of our initial um, base in relation to training guidelines uh, the power plate is a certified medical device so therefore has a, a huge and broad application for for many users um, but again that kind of consideration of one's ability to do strength training, weight bearing, and cardiovascular exercise. And hopefully I already answered the questions, some specific questions earlier around medical guidelines. And of course, if you have further questions then you can kind of drop us a message and we can answer specific questions around medical conditions um, sort of separately. So that essentially kind of concludes the session. Um, hopefully that's kind of given you maybe an introduction, uh, maybe some experience around the different applications. Kind of to summarize, the, 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 the journey was about what is the, the vibration, what is it? Uh, we talked about harmonic vibration and uh, the different directions the power plate moves in. Then we talked about why should you use it? That's how is the body responding? 
that's the muscle activation, um, stimulating blood flow, stimulating circulation. And then the how bit is the practical application. So are they using it for, for warm up, for stretching, for flexibility, for mobility, for strength? And sort of to lead on from here, then if you haven't already, we really encourage you to download the PowerPlate app because a lot of the exercises and so much more that I've gone through today are located on the, the PowerPlate app. It's free, you just have to register and you can select um, different classes, different programs, and also a lot of individual exercises as well. And then for those of you that are coaches, trainers, medical practitioners, then we have a section at the bottom of the app, which uh, is for coaches. Again, goes into a lot more detail around application for uh, preparation, for performance, for rehabilitation and different types of practical application. So definitely encourage you to download the app. And I'm just going to just check the chat one more time, just in case we have any final questions. Uh, good question. So I just so Sally, just around um, hip replacement and the vibration loosen uh, prosthesis. Then again, it comes back to the same question earlier in relation to um, joint replacements, pins, plates, and bolts. Is at the point where an individual is able to return to normal use uh, or normal normal function to a degree in terms of weight bearing, in terms of performing uh, even very low level cardiovascular exercise and strength based training we would apply the same principles that then, yes, they could return to using, using power plate with a, with a hip replacement, um, certainly, and also a joint replacement, maybe a knee replacement. What we recommend certainly initially, just purely precautionary, is not to put that area of the body in direct contact. So, for example, if it's the hip, we would avoid, um, which obviously you may avoid this exercise in general, depending on the, um, how recent the, the surgery would be. But essentially, this is now more of a passive um, passive vibration directly to the hip joint. So we would certainly consider um, or put some consideration around those positions. But in terms of uh, every every other exercise, um, you know, adding strength, stability, um, particularly around the hip joint, then vibration can be a huge advantage to to, to adding to a rehabilit rehabilitation program for. Uh, knee replacements, hip replacements, something I've worked with clients extensively over the years with, with um, joint replacements. And again, always found that when introduced at the right time, then certainly power plate can be a very safe, very effective way of rehabilitation, but also then gaining strength, balance um, and function uh, post-surgery. So yes, that would certainly be um, uh, a good application. Okay, Jess, have I missed anything? Um, there's just one more question that came in mm -hmm. saying, can you go over the Hertz settings on the move? Of course, yes, I will. So this will be my last one. I'm very conscious of time. Uh, so with the move, you have six settings. So they are shown with LED lights. So when you have light number one, that is 30 Hertz low. Light number two is 35 Hertz low. And light number three is 40 Hertz low. Then when you go to four lights, the frequency drops back to 30, but the amplitude changes to high. So four lights is 30 high, five lights is 35 high, and then six lights is 40 high. So essentially it goes 30, 35, 40 low, 30, 35, 40 high. Uh, and that's the, that's the settings on the move. And that also corresponds to um, the My 7 and Pro 7 as well in terms of the numbers. So essentially, you get a, a frequency range of 30 to 40 hertz with the move, uh, low and high. OK, so guys, thank you very much for your time. Um, I apologize for running over slightly. We had some great questions in the middle, which kind of maybe sort of extended the time. So thank you very much for joining us. Hopefully, that was a useful session. As I said, we have lots more education available uh, through the app, or also through some of our live and online programs. So please stay in touch. And if there are further questions, then obviously we will um, we will provide information where you can connect with us um, and we will continue to answer those questions. So uh, again, my name's Steve. Been great to uh, spend the time with you. Thanks very much for joining and we will end the session now. So have a great day and I'll speak to you all soon. Bye-bye.